Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today is, how do I work with dates and times in Pandas? Okay, great question. There's a lot of powerful time series functionality in Pandas. And in fact, uh, Pandas series is named after the time series. So I'm just going to show you the basics today. Okay. So we're going to start by importing pandas as pd. And then uh, our example data set will be UFO reports. So pd.read CSV. Uh, I need that as a string. And uh, bit.ly slash UFO reports. Okay. And let's take a look at the head. All right. So each row represents a UFO reported sighting. And what if I wanted to uh, analyze these sightings by year or by time of day? How would I do that? So uh, let's take a look at the D types and check those out. And we'll see that the time column is an object, which in this case means it's stored as a string. So if I wanted to analyze the hour, for example, I might think, well, I could do some string slicing. Okay, So uh, let's try like ufo.time.stir.slice. And we'll slice from position negative 5, so 5 characters from the end, to negative 3, which is 3 characters from the end. Okay. And that does work. Uh, it, it outputs a string, and we probably want it, like this is a two-character string. We probably want it as an integer. So we'll do dot as type int, and we'll throw in a dot head. And now um, we've got the hour, and this works in this case. But this feels like an approach that would um, easily break. It's very brittle. Okay, so. Let's use a better methodology, okay? And the solution here is to convert the time column to pandas special date time format, okay? So uh, I'm going to overwrite the time column, and I'm going to say UFO bracket time equals pd.toDateTime. time. This is a top level function. And I'm going to pass it ufo.time. Okay. And if we uh, look at the head, we'll see that the data seems to be the same as before. The formatting looks like it's different. But the real thing that's changed is the D type is now date time. Okay. It's a special date time format. Now, before we move on, I want to point out. I did not have to specify two pandas uh, with this date time function the format of this. I did not have to tell it this is a month, then there's a slash character, and then there's a day, then there's a four digit year, then there's a space, etc. It just figured it out and it and uh, it did that automatically. Now, if you try this on your own data and it does not work automatically, there are a lot of options you can use with pd.toDateTime in order to get it to work. Okay. So what are some benefits that using the date time format gives us? Well, uh, the big one is it exposes some really convenient attributes like ufo.time dot dt, so this is a little dt namespace, dot hour. OK, that pulls out the hour for us. Or dot weekday name. It, understand, it actually knows that June 1st, 1930 was a Sunday. You don't have to write custom code if you're, for instance, analyzing something by day of the week. And there's also. Um, just a, a number version of the weekday. Okay, you can do you can do other things like day of year, and it will tell us that June first, nineteen thirty, was the hundred and fifty second day of that year. Okay, so there's a ton of attributes like this. If you want to see them all, 
go Google Pandas API reference, get to this page, and then search for dot dt dot. And you'll click on date time like properties, and you'll see all of these series properties under series dot dt dot whatever. Okay. So um, let me show you a couple more things, and let's do dot head. So this is not taking over the screen. And um, uh, let's pass pd dot to date time. Uh, date time. Let's pass it a string instead of a series. And I'm just going to say 1, 1, 1999. Okay. It outputs what's known as a timestamp. Um, and one thing I want to point out is note that I changed the format of how I passed it. I passed it month, day, year in my case, and it figured it out. Um, I did not have to specify, uh, you know, that this was the month, this was the day, this was the year, okay? So uh, this is called a timestamp, and we're gonna save this as TS, and the reason I save that is I'm gonna use that in a, um, a comparison. So one trick you can do with timestamps is you can use them as part of comparison. So if I say ufo.loc, I can say, UFO dot time greater than or equal to timestamp colon. So I'm saying, which rows do I want to see in the UFO data frame? I want to see the ones where the time is greater than or equal to this timestamp. And because UFO dot time is date time, and because TS is a timestamp, it can do this comparison with greater than or equal to. And then the colon just means show me all columns. So we'll run that, and we'll see that it's only showing us um, rows in which the time is greater than, meaning into the future, from January 1st, 1999. Okay, pretty cool. All right, let me uh, throw a dot head on here. And another trick I want to show you is that you can do kind of like mathematical operations with the date time format. So if I say ufo.time.max, it will tell me the latest timestamp in the time series. Okay. I can even say ufo.time.max minus ufo.time.min. So you can do math with these. And it tells you, it outputs in a special object called a time delta object. And it tells you that the difference between the earliest row and the latest row is 25,781 days, etc. Okay, So this is called a time delta object. And uh, time delta objects also have attributes like dot days. And you can pull things out like that. So uh, you can get really fancy with the stuff. This is really just the basics. Uh, as always, I'm going to end with a bonus. And the bonus for today is I'm going to do a little plotting of uh, the number of UFO reports by year. Okay. So to plot in the Jupyter Notebook, we need to do matplotlib inline. Okay. That allows plots to appear. And then uh, I'm going to store, uh, I'm going to create a new column called UFO year. And I'm actually just going to store UFO.time.dt.year in it. Okay. And we can see that that worked. UFO.head. Okay. So we've got this year column. All right. Now, if I want to, if I want to analyze how many reported sightings by year, uh, one way to do it, it's not the only way. Um, would be ufo.year.value counts. How many rows, how many times does each year appear? Well, this is great, except it's sorted by value. Um, so let's uh, sort it by the index instead. So dot sort index. Okay. And now it's in the order of the index. And all we have to do to get a plot is to just say dot plot. And it does a line plot by default. And here we go. Here is our plot of UFO reported sightings by year. Okay.
So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, please click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Please leave me a comment below if you have uh, a comment for me or a question. I'd love to hear from you. But that's it. So uh, I hope to see you again soon.